this tutorial we're going to see some of the brushes you can use in Blender, either procedural textures as brushes or images as well. This tutorial is a little bit longer than the other ones because it doesn't show only the tool but it also shows some of the workflow about sculpting as well. And why it's important to mix all these tools like draw, smooth, pinch, mix them and try to use them combined. So let's add a texture, go to texture button, switch to brush and now we can add uh, any texture we want. I'm going to add a blend type of sphere and as you can see it's exactly the same of the brush actually after the default brush. So we're going to tweak it a little bit with the help of the color band There you can see the difference. I'm just changing the values of this color band, then go to the 3D view, press F to see the preview. Now let's tweak it a little bit, make a little circle there. I also changed the interpolation type of this curve to B spline to have more soft interpolation between these uh, the colors. So I think that's okay for now. So now I'm just starting to sculpt there. Press F to scale, but it's too slow and you can have these kind of things. Just it's maybe too slow I think. There is a really good tool which is called Anchor. So now with Anchor, whatever we click and drag, Blender will put our texture there. So we don't have to worry about the, the scale actually, we just see how it looks and then accept or undo. The other way you should you will have to just click there, see how it looks, then cancel or so. But now here you can scale it and see it in, in real time. It has a better use with the uh, other kind of textures actually, which I am going to show later. So you just click and drag with this tool. I'm going to draw a little line there along my tentacle there. Doesn't have to look perfect actually, it's just the rough line and then we're going to tweak it. Not everything has to look perfect from the start, of course. Now let's add some volume there so we can play with afterwards. So now that we have the line there and the volume, we can start tweaking this by using the smooth tool or maybe the pinch one. As you can see now, we're kind of making this line a, little, a lot more thinner, which is nice, it's what we want, it's more detail. Add some volume there, smooth. With shortcut is so easy, just S to smooth, then P for pinch, then go back to draw with D. Now P for pinch, pinch there. Then there. Then draw again, hold shift for subtracting for pushing the vertices down actually and then P for pinch there again pinch again and now soft to soften the, the, the edges, the borders 
So it's not that it will look good from one stroke, it's a combination of tools. It's part of the workflow. Here I'm using inflate a little bit to help give more a little bit more volume to these shapes there. And also have, helps to close this ugly line there, which we can use pinch for it and then some inflate as well. Like a mix of tools. Then smooth because inflate sometimes is too too strong. Now I lost my my circles a little bit, so I'm going to draw them again with the unchart option is a lot easier. The shortcut for the unchart is Shift A. As you can see, I'm just clicking on the middle of these circles, and then just click drag. and that will draw the little circle there. So now I'm going to use another texture because I want to do some uh, crackles or something, some sort of crackles there on the other side. So we'll use a distorted noise for this, which by default is not what I want actually. I want some crackles, I said, so I will use Boronite Crackle there and Boronite Crackle also as a noise basis. Now I got this this kind of texture, which if we use it right away, uh, maybe it's too strong. There. And now the anchor option makes a lot more sense. It's so cool. You can just click, drag, and you can control the size of this texture and the rotation of it. So with only one texture, it will look like you have many of them, or you made everything not by hand, but uh, kind of gives that that feeling. So you can make big crackles on the where this uh, this tentacle is bigger, and then make smaller crackles on the tip, for example. I'm going to add uh, one more level of subdivision so I have more detail to play with. But still, you can see that up there next to the blender.org URL, you can see the amount of vertices and faces, and it's not that much actually. It's only 300,000 uh, vertices, which I'm keeping in that low because. Uh, well, I'm recording this, and it takes some CPU power. But also, this doesn't need that amount of detail, actually. Some people use millions and millions, and also this is with, recorded with my laptop, which is not the fastest around. But it's, it's good because it, it means that you don't need a really super computer for using the Blender Sculpt tools. So I'm just now using Pinch. For getting all these lines a little bit more thinner, I changed the extrapolation of this curve. So now I can, instead of using the default brush, I have a more uh, uh, like a smaller brush there. So now as you can see with the help of the curve in the brush panel I made my brush to be a lot more smaller like dark on the in the very center. So when I use pinch I'm only affecting the really center of my brush not borders. That helps to be more more precise when doing this kind of, of things. Sometimes the pinch tool can can uh, mess up everything, uh, or not mess up everything, but just take too many vertices into account, and you only want a little part of it, so you can use the, the core for that. Now I'm using the inflate tool, which actually helps a little bit more in uh, in getting all these crackles together without the the line in between. Sometimes it's too much so you just 
press S to change to smooth, fix it, paint a little bit, then inflate again with I, and that way you're combining a lot of tools, which is so cool, it's nice. I'm going to remove the specular bright, I don't need it anymore. More matte effect, it's nice. So the last texture I'm going to use is an image, actually. So add a new one, type image. I already made one little simple scratch texture there, which as you can see is some just scratches. I made it on, on the GIMP. Like this is the GIMP. And uh, yeah, it took me a few minutes, just made a simple scratches. And as you can see now, the white parts on the texture are now the black parts or the active parts. They are actually the parts that are going to to act as a brush there. And now the anchor tool helps a lot more even because with only one texture we can add scratches all over our our model and rotate, see how it looks. Now cancel then do it again cancel and so on. You can mix them and it looks like you have a lot of texture there but no it's only a few. Also this texture is really small it's only 512 so that's why you probably need a, a bigger resolution texture if you want more detail on your brush. As you can see there, it's only 512. Now let's switch to some smooth or pinch. To get this line a little bit, a little bit more closer. This th the lines make, ma make it more thin, thinner. You can also use the inverted mode for these kind of brushes. As we said with shift, holding shift, we can use the same texture but to have a totally different result. As you can see there, it's the same Boronoi crackle texture. but a totally different result. So that's a little bit of the workflow and all the brushes you can use. You, ha you can have plenty of them, so just go on and uh, practice. It's a lot of fun. See ya.